Today I want to talk about getting a series of LEDs to blink one after another using an Arduino and a breadboard. And as you can see here, I have an LED and it is blinking on and off and it is connected to a breadboard. And if we follow the power here, the positive, it's coming from pin 13 going up to this positive rail, down this wire to the anode of the LED, which is the long leg. And if we follow that LED connection through to the other side, there's your cathode of the LED to a resistor, down to this wire, and into this negative rail and back to ground. Let's keep a couple of things in mind. And the first would be these two legs here are not electrically connected. Electrical connections run down the rows of poles. As you can see, they highlight in green to show you what's connected. Uh, they don't run across. If you want them to run across, those are the rails, the power rails going in the other direction. These are all electrically connected, as are these, but not to each other. The second thing is this resistor is bridging a gap because this split in the breadboard is also a big divider, and any of these holes are not connected to these holes on the other side all the way down through. It's an electrical dead zone. So if you need electricity to pass over that, you need to bridge that gap with either a wire or a component of some kind, in this case, a resistor. So the resistor is going from this hole over here, which is, um, yeah, which is connected to the cathode. Sorry for a second there. I was expecting another wire on that side, and I forgot I put it over there. Um, <clears throat> So the resistor is connected to the cathode on that side, and on this side it's connected to this wire running down to the grounded rail. Okay, let's take a look at the code making this happen. We're going to click on the code button. If that's your first time opening the code, code is not an option. Unless you've got an Arduino in your program, you need to make sure there's an Arduino there first before you can open the code. And then if it opens up to this, this is a block display of the program that's running. We do not want to work with that. We would want to change that over to text. And then just hit continue. It's going to say, are you sure? Because all of your blocks are going to be erased. That's fine, because I wasn't using any of them. Anyway, this is the code that's running. And this code is using the LED built in three different places on the Arduino Uno. The built in LED on the Arduino Uno is also in 13, which means this code would all run just fine if I replaced LED built in with 13 all the way down through. So in here and also in here. What I'm going to do is not replace it with a 13, but instead replace it with a new name. I'm just going to call it LED. Why would I do that? You'll see. It's going to be useful later. I'm going to just replace all of those. And now LED doesn't exist. We have a problem. LED built in did exist. But since we replaced it with our own custom code, we now have to create that custom LED. And so that is called a variable. To declare a variable in your Arduino program, you want to typically go above your void setup. And whoops, didn't mean to capitalize that. Declare it as a container that is going to hold on to a certain type of data. In this case, I'm declaring it as an int, which means it's going to hold an integer or a whole number. So int and then the name of your variable. In this case, I call it LED, capitalizing everything, because that's what I did down here, capitalizing everything. Case is important. I'm going to set it equal to 9. And then I'm going to add a semicolon. I'm just going to add a space to help identify the separation between the section of the code that includes the variables and then the setup, which is all of this, and then the loop, which is all of this. So right now, our LED variable is equal to 9. So when we're trying to set LED as an output, that's referring to a specific pin on the board. The pin mode is the command that sets that pin up as an output. There's nothing connected to pin 9. We're still connected to pin 13. So I'm going to need to come over here and move that wire over to pin 9. And now, start the simulation. Our light is blinking again. Thing is happy. Code is working just fine. 
if I want to do this with more than one light, then I have some options, but options have um, some consequences associated with them. So if I just copy and paste this, drop it in right there. I'm going to copy and paste that resistor as well. Drop it in. I'm going to duplicate this wiring setup. Just toss a wire in there. Need to make that orange. Stick with the green for now. Toss another wire in here. Okay, we just check this wiring over carefully before we run it. <clears throat> I have positive on the anode for this LED. I have positive on the anode for this LED. I have negative on the cathode for this LED and negative on the cathode for this LED. Everything should have power, but they're both sharing a pin number. So they are lighting up at exactly the same time. If we wanted these to blink in sequence, that is not what we got. They are blinking simultaneously. So I'm going to stop this. And the way around it is to get rid of these two wires that are connecting to that power rail. Stop using the power rail entirely. Run the power directly to the anode on the LED. And that means we need another wire running to this anode. Pin 9 is already used. We need a new pin. So I'm going to grab, well, let's see, I'll grab pin 10. So we'll make it easy to go up and around that wire and over in like that. Now let's change its color. This is where the orange comes from. Okay. So now I have pin 9 connected to this LED, pin 10 connected to this LED. Both of them are using a ground rail, which is fine as long as they're getting their positive from different sources. Now we can program those different sources to light up at different times. So now if I go back to my code, I have one variable for uh, pin 9. Let's go ahead and create another variable for pin 10. I'm simply going to copy that and paste it and give it a new name. You can't use the same name again. If I did use the same name again, I would be replacing the old value. That would not be any good. So I will just set up LED2 to equal pin 10. I will then come down in here. Essentially, we want to use all of this code again. We need them both to be set to high. We need them both to be set to low. We need them both to delay. But pay attention to where you put them. Because if I were to just take this line of code here and paste it in there, change that to a 2, Congratulations, you have both LEDs turning on at exactly the same time, which is what we were not trying to do. We want them to go one after the other, which means number two shouldn't turn on until number one has been turned off. And number one hasn't been turned off yet. It's still on. So undo that. We're going to take all four of these lines. We need the on and the off commands, as well as the delays in between them. And then I'm going to come down here and paste it again. Quite take enough space on that. We're going to have to line up. There we go. And now if I change that to a 2 and that to a 2, run our code, one LED blinking and the other LED blinking. One is significantly dimmer than the other. What did I do there? Hmm. Thinking about this, thinking about this. Ten. Oh, that was a mistake. Um, but you are likely to make a similar mistake at some point in time, so I'm glad I made it here for you to see. I set up one LED as an output. I never set up the other. That doesn't mean it didn't lit up, uh, light up. It did. But it didn't have the right amount of power because the Arduino was never told that we were going to be using that pin for power. So I need to modify my setup to include pin modes for both pins that are being used, LED and LED2. Now let's run it. Um, here we go. Now they are both blinking in sequence and they are equally bright. I'd like to change one more thing. These are not blinking very fast. If I had all 10 LEDs plugged in here and going, it might take us a while to watch them go all the way through. So let's speed it up. Now, the delay is what's controlling that speed. This light is on, or high, 
for one full second before it ever turns off, and then it's off for a full second before the next one turns on. We could easily change these numbers, and we'd have to change it in four places. Anytime you have to change something in four places, five places, six places, ten places, that's a good place to use a variable. Don't, ha don't leave yourself in a situation where you have to go in and change numbers over and over and over for the same thing. If there's a chance that that's going to happen, create a variable. I'm going to call this one speed. And notice I'm not capitalizing. You don't have to. But once you make that decision to go upper or lower case or a combination thereof, you've got to stick with that decision and use the same capitalization all the way throughout your program. So I'm going to set this speed to 200. And now what I need to do to use that speed is I'm just going to copy that variable name and I'm going to put it in here where there used to be a thousand every place. And now if I run my code, these are going to blink much, much faster. You can even change one of them to blue. And some red and blue lights flashing back and forth. At any point in time, if I wanted to change my mind and speed this up even more or slow it down. I just changed the one number. That one number is tied to all these variables and the whole simulation gets faster or slower depending on what I want. So that's a good reason to use variables whenever you can, whenever it seems like it's going to make sense because it's a value that's going to change or that might change and you're using that value many times in your program. Uh, for the LED, LED number 1 and LED number 2 here, 9 and 10, it didn't necessarily make sense to use variables there because I only used them a couple of times each. LED, LED, I could have easily put 9 and 9 and then 10 and 10, but it didn't hurt to have variables. So there you go. If I got this working in the simulator, there's no reason I couldn't take this exact wiring diagram, replicate it on a real-life breadboard, connect it to my real-life Arduino, and copy and paste all of this code over to the Arduino IDE and then send it to my Arduino and the code should run. The only reason um, that it wouldn't behave exactly like this is if you had some sort of wiring problem and the most common wiring problem on the actual breadboard is going to be putting one of these wires into the wrong hole. Missed, there's small wires, small holes, maybe you hit the one next to the one you wanted um, and or once you get a lot of LEDs and wires all connected together here, maybe you have two bare metal components that are actually bent a little bit and they're touching each other. That can cause a short circuit path for the electricity to flow and prevent some of your LEDs from lighting up. Um, so if you're careful about those things, you should be able to do this both in the simulator and real life. Good luck.